up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony and today we are in the new 2020 chevy spark courtesy of apple chevrolet in york pa and so i've been reviewing this one i think the past couple years it's kind of like a go-kart to me so we keep jumping back in it because it's fun it's a fun little car but Anywho, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there will be a few different trim levels available for the 2020 Spark. First one being the LS, starting at $14,095. One LT, which is actually the one we have today, this one is gonna start at $15,995. Two LT for $17,495. And lastly, the Active, starting at $17,095. And so with that being said, that was all pricing for the manual setup. If you wanted to go with a CVT, simply add $1,100 to any of those prices. But so regardless of trim level, the power plant on the Chevy Spark will actually be the same. Powering this little guy is going to be a 1.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine, putting out 98 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 94 pound feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM. Power is gonna be sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a five speed manual or a CVT. Again, we do have the CVT transmission today. And MPG numbers according to the transmission is gonna come in at 29 in the city, 38 on the highway for the five speed, 30 city, 38 highway for the CVT. So a very slight difference, a little bit better with the CVT, but not by much. But either way, I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's do a quick little acceleration test in the 2020 Spark and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. Somebody turbocharged this thing. It does kind of feel like it doesn't have 100 horsepower, but still, this is an economy car. And I will say it is kind of zippy at low speeds, but as far as acceleration goes, maybe merging onto the highway, you might need to punch it a little bit. So keep that in mind. But having said that for a small city car, it is honestly kind of zippy at slower speeds, that is. But so then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so in the 2020 Spark, you will find front disc rear drum brakes that is gonna be standard on every single trim level. But again, a lot of these subcompact cars, they will give you that setup. Like for instance, the new 2020 Verse I just reviewed, but that is because it is such a small car it doesn't weigh a whole lot so you don't need four-wheel disc brakes and they try to keep the price down as well so yet another reason is front desk rear drums so anywho braking feel is just fine so no worries there touching on suspension and handling up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back a compound crank rear suspension and I did want to also mention if you were to go with the active trim level the crossover style spark that is gonna give you more of a touring suspension. So a little better ride quality with that one according to Chevy there. But speaking of ride quality though, honestly, it's pretty much as expected in the 2020 Spark. It's not too bad, honestly, I don't mind it. I could definitely live with this on a regular basis, no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it is actually quite nimble. I've been having fun with this. You can kind of throw it around a little bit. That's one of the joys of having a small car. It is more of a nimble little thing. So it is kind of fun for that reason. As far as cabin noise goes, I'm sitting at a red light right now, so you're not gonna be hearing too much, but typically with smaller cars, you do hear a little bit extra outside noises coming into the cabin, and I would say it's pretty on par for the course, though, as far as subcompact cars go. And then touching on visibility, honestly, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Smaller cars, you almost never have any issues, but really visibility is most definitely on point in the 2020 Spark, so no issues there. But that is about it for the performance segment of this review. Let's go ahead and check out the exterior now, this new 2020 Chevy Spark. All right, so on the outside of the 2020 Chevy Spark, up front, that front grille will actually differ slightly depending on the trim level, specifically if you went with the active trim level, this is gonna give you quite a substantially different front grille. Crossover type styling with that active trim level, it's gonna be kind of similar to the Nissan Kicks or maybe the Hyundai Kona. Um, so if you were looking for a kind of crossover, small crossover type of style, the active trim level is where you're going to want to be at with the spark at least. But other than that, to the sides, halogen headlights are going to come standard on every single trim level. That, of course, is what you're looking at right now. They will actually come with the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for you there. Just below that, you have daytime running lights as well. They definitely look good there. But overall, a very nice looking front end, in my opinion, on the 2020 Chevy Spark. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so let me first start by mentioning for those of you wondering, although you can only see two door handles on the side, this is actually a four door. Those 
rear door handles are kind of integrated just behind the window in black. So you may not have seen them originally, but this is a four door spark. In case you were curious. Side mirrors are gonna differ based on the trim level as well. Black manual outside mirrors with the LS. You will get body colored side mirrors with the 1LT trim level and up. They will be heated again for the 1LT trim level and up. And looking up a little bit, if we were to have that active trim level, you will find crossover style roof rails up top as well. But let's go ahead and make our way to the wheel setup. They will differ again based on the trim level. I'm gonna keep saying that I feel like. 15 inch steel wheels with covers with the LS trim level. 15 inch aluminum alloy wheels for the 1LT and 2LT. LT trim levels and if you were to go with the active you will find a 15 inch gun metal aluminum alloy wheel setup specific of course to that particular trim level but let's go ahead and make our way to the back you will find a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light for every single trim level just below that is expected a rear window wiper trim level badging can be found on the rear lift gate as far as the taillights go it is a pretty cool looking design from the back honestly I like it but they are not LED in case you were curious, but either way, just below all of it, you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And so since we are now round back, as far as opening that rear lift gate goes, there actually is not a button on the key fob that we have today. I simply just lift it up underneath and that is how I got this one open. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 11.1 .1 cubic feet. However, there is a 60-40 split, meaning those rear seats do fold down for a decent amount of extra space if you needed it there. It's gonna come in at 27.2 cubic feet. Did wanna also mention, since we have a hatchback, there is a cargo area cover back there to kind of hide what you actually have behind there so people are less inclined to break into it that's always a good thing and there is a cargo light back there as well as expected but then making our way up to the rear leg room that is going to come in at an even 33 inches so for reference this is me sitting behind my own driving position as far as the space goes it comes in at an even 33 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there did want to mention for those rear passengers there is also a rear center cup holder and storage if they wanted it and a passenger side seat back pocket it back there for a little extra storage too but make your way to the front seats cloth seating is going to come with the ls and 1lt trim level of course that is what you're looking at right now leatherette seating for the 2lt and the active trims you will actually get heated front seats as well if you want with the 2lt or actives as well overall seats are actually pretty decently comfortable so no complaints from me looking forward at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is three spoke and it will come leather wrapped if you want with the 2lt or active trim levels so this particular their steering wheel is wrapped in urethane but then when it comes to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key you do have your chevy logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock and unlock pretty basic key there to actually go ahead and start this one up all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and turn the key and so but then once started up fuel information is all the way on the left next to the right is the tachometer and then the speedometer of course you have your trip a trip b and how many current miles are on the vehicle so pretty standard gauge display there take a look at overall interior quality if you wanted a power sunroof that is going to be optional for the 2lt of course we don't have that today so i can't show it to you but that would have been pretty sweet one thing i did like about the interior quality though is just on top of the passenger side glove box there there is a pretty decent cubby area right there so good amount of storage there there's a lot of piano black finishes again above the glove box that ties into the doors and around the infotainment screen there so that looks pretty cool then just in front of the shifter you're going to find a 12 volt power outlet usb charging port and actually a phone charger as well there's going to be some more storage space right behind that two cup holders found right in front of the shifter there and behind the shifter a little bit of extra cubby space too and one single cup holder just behind all of that so decent amount of storage for the size of the vehicle honestly but but since I mentioned it, let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display because this is something Chevy always does right. Seven inch colored touchscreen display will actually come standard on every single trim level of the Spark. That is definitely pretty nice. Bluetooth and audio streaming also standard along with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That is something that is standard even on the bottom trim level of the Spark. That is excellent. A lot of manufacturers don't do that, so that is perfect. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay
display, of course, allowing you free navigation through your smartphone, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. And there's a couple other apps you can view on that infotainment screen as well through that. As far as the sound system goes on the Spark, you will get four speakers if you went with the LS and six speakers if you were to go with the one LT trim level and up. So you guys know what we have to do next. Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> All right, surprising amount of bass once the drop hit there. That was that was pretty impressive. I got to be honest, I'm kind of speechless. It's a six speaker sound system and it's a decent amount of bass. So pretty cool. Maybe it's the size of the Spark. The fact that it's so much smaller, you could feel a little bit more of that sound system. But then last thing I wanted to mention on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Spark in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start there, our front side and side curtain airbags, also driver and passenger knee air bags that doesn't come standard on every vehicle out there in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also standard tire pressure monitoring system the two well t-trim level is going to add rear park assist and i did want to mention an optional safety package called the driver confidence package that is actually only going to add 295 dollars but considering that price point you also get forward collision alert lane departure warning and automatic emergency braking and super that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see y'all in the next video stay gold